Domestic discipline. You know, I thought, I thought that I had already humiliated myself on the internet enough that I was totally immune to this emotion. And then I decided to make a video about domestic discipline. <laughs> Why am I so embarrassed right now? So I guess we should start with feminism. I definitely think of myself as a feminist, but I also recognize that my boyfriend spanks me when I misbehave, which not everyone's gonna like that. The optics here are not good. It's very easy for me to demonstrate that my desire for this kind of dynamic predates my relationship with my current dominant. No, 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 I don't mean Daisy, although to be honest with you, she is the head of this household. I'm talking about that other guy I live with. Before I even met Dan, I had already published dozens of articles and even an entire book about how my obsession with disciplinary spankings dates back to my earliest childhood memories. So I do think it would be pretty hard for someone to make a persuasive case that I was coerced or pressured into this kind of dynamic. I also don't think that my sexuality is the product of internalized misogyny and this is where things get a little bit weird because although I am a woman, I don't have a particularly strong erotic response to the idea of specifically women getting spanked. The vast majority of my fantasies and favorite erotic spanking stories involve a male top and a male bottom. It's not disrespect, master, it's the truth. Assume the position. It's an injustice, Horatio. Discipline, aren't you? And to the extent to which my own experience of gender identity exists on a spectrum, the truth is I would say the moments when I'm being spanked are the moments when I feel most masculine. Make of that what you will. I sexually identify as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I do worry that I just threw some of my girlfriends under the bus and I don't wanna do that because I also don't think it's inherently misogynistic to respond to the idea of women being spanked. And I don't think that women who feel extra feminine when they're being spanked are guilty of internalized misogyny. It's all just sexuality and sexuality is weird. But does any of this even matter? Because here's the truth. Even if my sexuality were inherently misogynistic or anti-feminist or whatever, it would still be what it is. I didn't choose it and I don't think that my internal erotic life has broad political implications for women as a group. I do think that this is an individual thing and from an individual perspective, I've had the experience of being sexually unsatisfied and I've had the experience of being sexually satisfied and I know which way I prefer to live. And if anyone thinks that the dynamic that happens to make me feel the most sexually satisfied makes me a Phyllis Schlafly, well, I guess my only rebuttal is Phyllis Schlafly was much more successful than me. <laughs> what even is domestic discipline? Let's turn to youtube.com to learn more. A domestic discipline relationship is a dynamic between two consenting adults where you have a dominant and a submissive. The dominant is usually referred to as the HOH, which is head of household. The submissive is referred to as a sub or a TIH, which means taken in hand. The dominant sets rules and expectations for the submissive to live by, and there are consequences for not following the rules or not meeting those expectations. Okay, this is cute. They're a cute couple. And you know, this is pretty standard stuff for people who are kinky like me and also like this couple. Okay, domestic discipline and BDSM are different. Oh no. Because in BDSM, there's an enjoyment factor. Either you enjoy getting spanked or you enjoy spanking somebody. I don't enjoy being spanked. Do you though? I think maybe you do. I feel sort of bad right now because I really don't want to judge other people or make assumptions about their internal lives. This woman says she's not kinky and she's the authority on her own life. So really, what the hell do I know? That being said, I am skeptical. First of all, this is some kinky shit. It takes one to know one. I see. 
Second, and this is one of those really juicy thought exercises, so grab a napkin. I don't like being punished either, at least not in the moment. The enjoyment factor, as she calls it, comes later when I'm masturbating. I definitely like the fact that I don't like it. I'm hardly the first person to compare BDSM to exercise, but it's a really good analogy that holds up. I don't enjoy being punished, but that temporary unpleasantness is worth it to me because I do enjoy the overall sense of erotic satisfaction that this kind of dynamic brings to the rest of my life. Along those same lines, I also really, really do not enjoy running or going to the gym, but the temporary unpleasantness of working out is worth it to me. And she has an enjoyment factor too. In fact, this entire video is about how much happiness and satisfaction this dynamic brings to her life. Regardless of what the internet is trying to tell you, domestic discipline is not a way to get a bomb-proof marriage. It's also not a way to get closer to God or whatever the Christian domestic discipline crowd is saying today. For some of us, all it is is a way to get off. The four D's are danger, disobedience, denial, delusion. Paradoxically, when these people insist that they're just living in a purely disciplinary, non-sexual world with set boundaries and consequences, they're just tapping into the sexiest fantasy I can imagine. I do try to listen to people like this woman and like some vocal members of the Christian domestic discipline community who insist they've got nothing to do with BDSM or perverts like me. But I also think they're lying to themselves. But this channel isn't for people who are lying to themselves. It's for people like you and me who know that we're perverts and we own it. What does real life, no bullshit domestic discipline look like? For me. First off, in my relationship at least, it involves a lot less real discipline than the fantasy version of this lifestyle might suggest. I think I've been actually punished for something only once in the last six months, and that was for a sincere mistake that I actually do feel bad about. But like, look, I'm a grown ass woman. I've mostly got my shit together. I went to grad school. I own a home. When I say a scotch is lightly peated with a hint of toffee apple notes, I'm not faking it. I don't make real mistakes very often. The truth is, if any adult is earning a real punishment every single day, I think something has gone wrong. That's where punishments come in. We can still get spankings that tap into that yummy disciplinary headspace without needing to pretend that cutting a carrot the wrong way is a serious disciplinary infraction. Someone recently asked me what the difference between real punishments and punishments is, and my opinion is that punishments are anything I don't really regret and anything Dan isn't really grumpy about. No one actually cares if my carrot is more of a batonet than a brunoise, but it's freaking fun to pretend we care. The disciplinary dynamic I'm in also includes boundaries. I know I'm going to be accused of topping from the bottom for this, which is exactly why I want to talk about it. I never want younger spanking fetishists to think that having boundaries makes you bad or not submissive, or that having them means your disciplinary dynamic isn't real. Having boundaries, even in a disciplinary dynamic, is healthy and normal. And I think any healthy and normal top will agree. So here are three things I don't get spanked for, ever. My career and career choices are totally off limits. Dan doesn't pass judgment on the career decisions I make, and he doesn't even think he's qualified to try. If, for example, I set a writing deadline for myself and I don't meet it, Dan assumes that there were complicating factors at play that he, as a non-writer, cannot possibly understand. And that's true. The complicating factor is writing is hard. I also don't ever get spanked for health stuff. This one emerged pretty organically. Dan is a perceptive and empathetic guy, and he pretty quickly clocked onto the fact that I, like a lot of people, sometimes struggle with body image issues. So if he ever tried to spank me for, like, eating cake on a week when I had decided I wanted to avoid sugar, that would just open a whole Pandora's box of psychological issues. And that's... <laughs> That's not cute. That's that's a no-go zone for us. We also steer clear of financial stuff. I have an unhealthy tendency to panic about my financial situation. Don't worry about me, my financial situation is fine. One of my favorite things about Dan is that he balances out that part of me. If I start to panic because I like put less money into my savings account this month than I did last month, he's the one who reassures me that everything will be fine. If he tried to punish me for bad financial decisions, he'd just be adding salt to a pre-existing wound. And that's the opposite of what a top is supposed to do. It's the opposite of what a partner is supposed to do. But I know what you perverts want, so yeah. 
I will give you an example of something that I did get punished for once. I'm already embarrassed as it is, so why stop now? A few years ago, I was living in Nairobi and Dan was living in England. One night, I went out drinking with my friends, but I forgot to charge my phone and I also was not carrying a battery pack. So my phone died while I was out and that had a lot of the predictable natural consequences. I couldn't order an Uber to get home. I couldn't text Dan to let him know I was safe. I couldn't even pay for most things since M-Pesa, the mobile payment app that is most widely used in Kenya, was also on my phone. It was a dangerous but avoidable situation. All I had to do was keep a battery pack in my purse. Did I enjoy that punishment while it was happening? Yeah, I, I can't say that I did, no. <laughs> but have I enjoyed the memory every day since then? Yeah, yeah I have. It was 20 minutes of unpleasantness in exchange for a lifetime of orgasms. <laughs> Wow, did I, did, did I just write my wedding vows? See, this is the kind of content that is stupid to put on the internet. So that's an example of the kind of thing I would and did get punished for in my own dynamic. And it worked for me. I don't think I've gone out without a battery charger since, but I don't feel the need to delude myself that this memory isn't super erotic for both of us. It is, it's hot, it's extremely hot. But regularly putting ourselves into dangerous or undesirable situations like that to elicit a disciplinary response is no way to live. That's why punishments are so great. For those of us who do have this kink, it really is possible to live in that disciplinary headspace we love so much without needing to intentionally make bad choices to provoke it. The bottom line is, I think disciplinary dynamics are more real when actual discipline is rare. I think respectful boundaries, as many or as few of them as you want, make disciplinary dynamics more valid, not less. And I think a willingness to acknowledge that all of this is sexy as hell for people like us only proves that you have the self-awareness to handle this kind of thing. <laughs>